Good evening. Welcome to Freedom United Church of Christ. I'm Tom Bainham. I'm the senior pastor here, and it is an honor to have you worship with us on this Christmas Eve evening. One unlike we've never had before, but we are here in spirit, and we are thankful that you have decided to join in worshiping with us this evening. If you would like, normally when we're together, at some point we would be lighting candles at the end of the service, but I want to invite you to, to, to get a candle where you are and at the appropriate time at the end of the service uh, to join us in the lighting of the candles. Even though we won't see all of the candles together, um, we will be together in, in spirit. Again, it is great to have you worshiping with us. And now we continue this time of worship as we sing the Advent song. this morning, this evening, is the last time that we will light our Advent wreath. As night falls and the shadows grow long, we wait in hopeful expectation for the coming light. Light the candle of hope. As war and violence swirl around us, we watch for the coming Prince of Peace. Light the candle of peace. As we struggle amid the shadows and gloom, we drink deeply from the font of all joy. Light the candle of joy. As love seems a rare commodity in our world, we cling to the love that will not let us go. Light the candle of love. People of God, rejoice, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authorities rest upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And now we will light the Christ candle on the altar. the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with the angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born 
Sovereign Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and light to all he brings, rims with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, for that we no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. The House of Christmas by G. K. Chesterton There fared a mother driven forth out of an inn to roam. In the place where she was homeless, all men are at home. The crazy stable close at hand, with shaking timber and shifting sand, grew a stronger thing to abide and stand than the square stones of Rome. For men are homesick in their homes and strangers under the sun, and they lay on their heads in a foreign land whenever the day is done. Here we have battle and blazing eyes and chance and honor and high surprise, but our homes are under miraculous skies where the yuletide was begun. A child in a foul stable where the beasts feed and foam. Only where he was homeless are you and I at home. We have hands that fashion and heads that know, but our hearts we lost how long ago in a place no chart nor ship can show under the sky's dome. This world is wild as an old wives tale and strange the plain things are. The earth is enough and the air is enough for our wonder and our war. But our rest is as far as the fire drake swings and our peace is put in impossible things where clashed and thundered unthinkable wings round an incredible star. To an open house in the evening, home shall men come. To an older place than Eden and a taller town than Rome. To the end of the way of the wandering star. To the things that cannot be and that are. To the place where God was homeless and all men are at home. him king of kings crown him lord of lords wonderful counselor the mighty
People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult with divine plunder. For the yoke of, your, of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continuously, and that shall be an endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish, a, uphold, establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Brian and Dana, Dana, thank you for leading us at the beginning of worship and to Betty Skippers and to uh, Leanna uh, for doing our reading. You'll hear from Leanna's sister and mother later in the service. In the middle of the deepest, most brutal storms of our lives, we also feel a strange sense of somehow being anchored to peace tethered to the story of human beings suffering and survival through the, throughout the ages. The belief that peace is possible in the midst of chaos. So, here we are gathered together as this congregation has gathered for the past 186 Christmas Eves before tonight. But tonight is different because many who had gathered with us last year are missing physically, but not spiritually. But tonight is, but in spirit, last year we were able to hug and greet each other with Merry Christmas and safe travels 
But tonight, as with other faith communities around the world, we are gathering in the confines of our homes because of the darkness of COVID-19. Darkness. Darkness, a metaphor that describes suffering, sin, evil, distress, and death. A metaphor that best describes the current condition of our world and communities as well as our journeys of faith. Isaiah 9, 2 through 7 is a royal oracle or a message that, that for the people who walk in darkness, a time for light has come. It's called the prophetic future. The people who walked in darkness will see a great light the message of assurance. It also recounts the exodus deliverance and the settlement in Cana where Yahweh will lead the people in exaltation followed by the annunciation of the birth of a royal child, a child that is for unto us. This cause for celebration is not based on military or autocratic might, but rather on the birth of a new ruler, one given names not associated with military force or autocracy. Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. This God with us, Emmanuel, that was just sung a little earlier and quoted in Isaiah 7:14 will break the oppression of the cruel by releasing the yoke placed on the necks of the people. And as the, scripture, as the scripture was read, an oppression described as a rod, a weapon used by slave owners to beat the slaves. This Prince of Peace will bring war to an end, and by his birth, he will grow to become a great king in a Davidic line with a concern and passion for establishing justice and righteousness for all peoples. This prince will bring peace, will bring peace to the world. If we are to understand God's actions and movement in the present, we must remind ourselves of God's actions and movements in the past. The foundational purpose for God providing the child to establish and protect the kingdom with justice and righteousness affirms that not human strength but divine zeal will accomplish this. The foundational purpose for God's pr providing the child, the Christ child, to establish and protect the kingdom with justice and righteousness affirms that not human strength but divine zeal will accomplish this. If we are to understand and discern God's movement and purpose in our lives, then this night and this season must be more than decorations, gifts, and ornaments. As painful and as heartbreaking as this pandemic has been, it has revealed to us the darkness of our nation's spiritual and social core. God calls us, as he called the teenage virgin refugee, to be transformed by God's grace and wonder. While there was joy for Mary in the birth of her child, we must also claim that pain comes with that joy. Not just the, the pain of birth, but the pain that after the birth, they had to leave. My prayer for us, for all of us, this Advent and this Christmas, is that we will realize that darkness is a part of our everyday lives, but the light of Christ 
will make its way into the darkness. What God, what God does in the future, he has done in the past. That this prophecy has yet to be fulfilled and that Jesus, the Messiah, we need to understand that Jesus, the Messiah, does not come to solve our problems and our worries or that his presence will make it unnecessary for us to do the hard and painful work of proclaiming peace and evangelism and establishing justice and righteousness. Jesus sent the Son to proclaim the gift of love. Watch the video again if you want to. That's, that's what we are called to do. Saying yes to doing these things may not change the world, but it will surely change us. But we have to be willing in this season of Advent in the season of expectation to love, to love each other. It is a labor. It is not easy. At times it will be painful. But Mary said yes. God, in God's own way, is hoping or expecting us to say yes as well. Amen.
Today we'll be reading to you from Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to register with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, there was with the, the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the, high, in the high, highest heaven, and on earth peace among, among these whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one, another, to one another, Let's go now into Bethlehem and see, the thi and see this thing that, will be take that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all those words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
word of thanks and appreciation to, uh, to Karen Hitchcock, Katie Thompson, and Evie Wisman for sharing in our service, and to Savannah and to LaVon in, in being our readers for this evening. So tonight's benediction is going to be a little different. It's going to be sung. It's going to involve candlelight. I think too often we, we, trivial, we trivialize what happened at the manger in that, in that stall, the only place that was available. There was pain. There was joy. That God could do this could show his grace and his mercy through the birth of a child to a young girl. I wonder what it was like in that very still, quiet, silent night. I wonder what it was like maybe 186 years ago when this congregation, not in this building, but in a different building, met for the first time and sang Stile Nacht. So our benediction tonight will be that we sing Silent Night. Curtis will sing the first stanza in German, and then I invite you to join us on the remaining verses.
Jocelyn and I'm thankful for to have a family and be able to live in a house and have friends and be able to go to school. My name is Corey and um, I'm, thankful, I'm thankful for my animals and my mommy and daddy. There's, and that's what I'm thankful for. My name is Kylie and I'm grateful for my family, my friends, and that I'm healthy. And that's what I'm grateful, that's what I'm grateful for. Hi, my name is Adriana and I'm thankful for my family, my teacher, and my friends. And that's what I'm thankful for. Hey there, Busters. I'm thankful for my Xbox because all my friends are on Xbox. That's it. I am thankful for my friends. I am thankful that I have people that I can bond with and that I can get along with and I'm glad I have people that I can share something in common with and that I can like hang out with and it's really nice to have people that love me and that I love them and just have some kind of common ground. I am grateful for having my grandparents and being alive. And having a good family that I can most of the time trust, most of the time. I'm very thankful for my family and most importantly my mother because she supports me and yeah, she supports me a lot. And I'm also thankful for my friends, mostly my best friend. I am thankful for everything I have, that being food on the table, clothes, education, roof over my head, my car, thankful for all those things because some people don't get those. Um, I'm thankful for all the opportunities that I have in life. Um, I'm thankful for all the places I have been, all the vacations I have taken. I'm thankful for everyone that's in my life right now. Um, yeah. Hi guys. Today, I'm gonna to be showing who I'm thankful for. And who I'm thankful for at number one on my list is Leanna. She told me to put herself in number one, or she beat me up. The second thing is not having COVID because I wouldn't be able to be here. Third thing is my birthday and Christmas are coming up really soon. I'm gonna be 16, that'll be cool. Fourth thing is that I like music a lot and I'm really thankful for that. Fifth thing is just everybody in church squad, in church in general, because, you know, they're kind of like family. Sixth is family, because, you know, that's, you can't read that, never mind. Bye. Hi, I'm Miss Laura, and I am thankful for being able to teach Sunday school with all the kids, um, and we call it Peace Kids. I am thankful for my family and all my grandbabies and my animals, and I'm very thankful that God has given me and blessed me with a nice home, a husband, and lots of animals. And that's what I'm thankful for. Hi, I'm Rita. I am thankful for my family and my friends, my church family, and especially to see my little church people every Tuesday night. I'm Miss Amber, and I am thankful for my family, my friends, everyone around me, nature, and just all my loved ones. That's what I'm thankful for. I have so much to be thankful for, especially during these very trying times. I'm thankful for all the frontline workers, doctors, nurses, and the police and fire, EMTs. They're all doing so much to keep us safe and risking their lives to do that. I'm also very thankful for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, I, 
and I'm thankful for my family, my husband of 55 years, our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchild. Nearly five years ago, Levon, Leanna, Savannah, and I came to Freedens and immediately felt welcomed here. I have watched the girls grow into faithful, caring, loving young ladies. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of my daughter. When I see her up there doing the liturgy, it just melts my heart. I love you all so much. And all this is because of the guidance and the teachings of our church. Pastor Tom, Dana, and all the Sunday school teachers, we love you all. I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I know it's going to be a different and trying time this year, and it hurts not to be together. But we must be safe and take care of each other so we can have next year together, united, and celebrating life together. Love you all. This year, I'm grateful for family. Not just my personal family, but also the Friedman's family. I'm grateful for Pastor Tom and Dana and Curtis and everybody else who's working hard to keep our congregation together during this pandemic. I have a great deal to be thankful for, uh, particularly this year. Um, there isn't a day that doesn't go by in the last two years that I am not thankful for a congregation that would take a chance on a rookie pastor and who respect me and care and love me and uh, have given me the opportunity to use my gifts. So I'm thankful for Freedom's Church. I'm also thankful for my family, uh, particularly now being a grandfather. Uh, life is a little different and so I am very thankful uh, for having Teddy in my life. Uh, and I guess the last thing is that not only have I gained a grandson, but in a few days, I'll be gaining a son-in-law uh, as my daughter, Lindsay, is getting married to her fiance, Matthew. So I have a lot to be thankful for. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm thankful for my children, my grandchildren, my family, my friends, and my church family. Hi, my name is Curtis, and I am thankful for home. I'm thankful that I've got a place to work and make delicious meals. Uh, also a great place I can relax and enjoy my time with my husband and now decorate for the holidays. I'm thankful for friends and family and community. Friends and family, even though we cannot be physically together, that we can meet each other through technology and still be able to share our love for one another. And I'm thankful for community, especially communities like Freedoms, where we can share our love with one another still over that technology, but that we are sending our love to not just ourselves, but to our wider community. And that is a way to share God's love, and I am thankful 